Hello, and welcome back to today's Retro Tech. We're going to be looking at one of my very favorite pro video monitors today. That is the Sony PVM20L5 uh, broadcast monitor. Well, it's almost a broadcast monitor. It's still considered a pro video monitor, but it, it is about the most high-tech uh, and technologically advanced monitor you'll find in the PVM family. family. But um, I've got one in my shop that I'm going to be doing a uh, future proofing restoration on. There are actually some parts that Sony recommended be changed from their original design. So in uh, with this monitor, we're going to go in in another video and I'm going to discharge it, take it apart. And we'll look at the parts that need to be changed. And we'll change them and we'll put it back together, calibrate it and uh, give it a good cleaning and basically get it ready to be uh, sold off. So just to give you a quick background on this one, um, it is one that I purchased locally from an ex-video uh, editor who edited things like, well, I'm in Nashville, Tennessee area, and he edited things like country music videos in the 2000s, as well as like documentaries and other small projects that would have gone on in town. Um, but this was his personal monitor, and he bought it and used it very little. He had other monitors, and then it wound up going to a flat screen not, not too long after it. So it actually was something that was not really used at all. Um, it's never been shipped or anything like that, so it's a very good condition PVM. This one came from December of 2003, so, so again, a later manufacture date. And we're going to take a quick look at the inputs here. You've got RGB and component in the middle. Uh, that's a switchable input, but there is only that single input that's on the monitor to begin with. And we'll talk about the two option slots in a minute, but you can actually add a couple of different uh, BKM accessory cards to your PVM if you need to have additional inputs and things like that. But you've got a single uh, line A that has both S-Video and composite in and out with a mono audio. You've also got the line B that is the just composite audio and video in and out. Now, I do need to tell you, you do not need any kind of terminators for this, like the 75 ohm terminators. This is self-terminating, so you don't need that for this monitor. The RGB, again, is switchable here in the middle. You just notice that it starts with green, blue, and then goes to red, rather than the older monitors went from red, green, blue on the connection points. This one does have a different uh, setup for that, just, just in their organization. And then you've got a parallel remote input for like a serial port here. You've got a couple serial remote, uh, one in and out, if you want to use some kind of serial input device to connect to the communications between this monitor and other monitors and devices. And then you'll see up here where it's got audio option inputs one and two. Now, those are the two inputs uh, for your audio if you have cards installed in the slots on the upper side of the monitor, which should be visible here, uh, very right there, the, um, right above my head here on the left. There's the slot covers, and so that's where uh, those slots, you could take those covers off and just slide in uh, some type of a BKM. So now let's go and actually turn this monitor on because there's something I want to show you just specifically when you turn this on. Um, you'll notice here's the power button after it's pulled, you know, taken and powered up. You just press that, and then you press that little control button after it's powered up, and it'll bring up your menu which is just a bunch of switches here on the side. So rather than the dials and buttons that you'll see on BVMs as well as other PVMs, this goes back to that 2030 setup for the buttons where you've got the uh, able to turn on an LED that lights up and gives you the buttons on both the sides. We've got a lot of different things you could control on here. And then at the very bottom is a reset button but this is you push the menu button. Now, I want you to see first here how this jumps back and forth. This does tend to happen when you first start this monitor up for the first couple of minutes on RGB. And eventually, it will stable out and just stop jumping up and down like that. But that's normal with these uh, higher tech L-series monitors. They seem to do that. See, it's stopped now. It may even do it a little bit longer if that input's set to component. But just make sure that if you are using it, that you've got RGB and then you press the external uh, sync button over here under RGB so you have your sync set right. Another thing 
to note is that down here in the corner, you may notice when you turn on your RGB that it says 480-60i, and it is still in 240p mode. It's just saying uh, the monitor just naturally will always say that. And what you can control from these is like volume, contrast, uh, brightness, anything else like phase, chroma. Those are all controls that are built into this monitor. So once you get it set kind of with that initial menu, you can press that button again and it turns off the LEDs so you don't have those lights while you're using the monitor. Uh, you could just make them go away or, or bring them back if you need to. But the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at its condition now before we do these uh, capacitor replacements. It's actually in, I mean, amazing condition. I've not even used this myself probably more than a thousand, I mean, definitely not a thousand hours, maybe not even a hundred hours on this particular monitor myself. And again, the guy who I bought it from did not use it really at all. It's what he told me. So uh, again, the could everything on here is just, uh, it's, it's beautiful right now. And the job's going to be mainly preventative from this point. There is a tiny bit of convergence. Uh, I mean, very minuscule in the corners and across the tops and bottom of the screen. So that may be just something that we simply have to make a little adjustment on the yoke that I'll show you. But that's about the only issues that I saw overall on the calibration just from an initial setting. It's already nice and even centered up. And um, again, the linearity is very nice. And even the grid pattern is very sharp. And uh, there's no wonkiness in the corners at all to begin with. I'm just going to go through a couple more of these slides, or I'm sorry, the uh, 240p test suite uh, things here. And I'm, again, I'm using this through RGB and my Super Nintendo. Uh, what I'm checking for here is a red, green, and blue, and then white screen and black screen test. That shows me if there's any purity issues within the magnetism there. That's just a quick sharpness test, so we could see how sharp it is on this scale. This is, a, you know, it, it just could give you a good idea of the actual sharpness on the tube. And one of the last things I like to always run through is a scroll test, because it's it's there's some things you're just not going to see unless your picture's really in motion. The scroll test is nice because you can change the speed from slow to stopping and then slow and speed it up and go really fast. There's also a grid scroll test, which I really like because, again, it's showing you more of a, a pattern that's going across the screen and what it actually looks like. So those are some uh, tests that I always try to do to see the overall linearity condition of the screen to begin with. I'm going to show you one of my favorite games to test monitors on, and that's Shadowrun for the Super Nintendo. And the reason being is this is a very sharp game. It's got some interesting uh, backgrounds, and uh, it doesn't have green color in the title screen here, which would make it pretty much perfect if it did. But there's a lot of stuff you, on the whole screen where you can see for sharpness and with uh, the different lines that are going across it completely. Just on this, this is just the title screen, but that's just one of the good aspects of this game is this title screen. It's just very uniform, easy to check and see if you have any kind of issues with your uh, screen. And I just tried to get as close as possible here uh, to show you the extreme sharpness of this monitor and how amazing the scan lines look. So this is like the title screen entrance or before the title screen on Shadowrun. It's got this amazing drop down uh, thing here where it's almost the exact opposite of what I was showing you on the Sonic uh, scroll pattern. This is a scroll pattern down. So this gives you both, by using this game, you get both the uh, patterns of going, you know, we're going side to side on the test suite. And on this one, I'm watching the downward movement so I could make sure that there's no wonkiness really anywhere in that picture. And to start with, this one's pretty good. You also get this cool shadow effect where the shadow run will pop up and down the screen and get into its final position before the title screen ultimately comes up. And even the game itself, when you go through some of the gameplay, it's a very good game to judge uh, based on the outline square of the uh, actual game itself while you're playing it. So the last couple minutes here are just going to be a lot of gameplay footage of some uh, competitive rounds with the computer on Dr. Mario for Super Nintendo. This is the Dr. Mario Tetris version. Uh, so again, I want to talk just specifically about this monitor. 
I've got a list here for the caps, and then there are actually some other parts. It's not just caps that have to be replaced on this monitor. You've got other parts in it uh, that are going to be replaced. It's got a couple boards. When we get inside, you'll see how um, the one problem with the 2005 is it's really compact inside, and there's a lot of plastic holding it together. So it's really vital not to just uh, take shipping for granted when it comes to a 2005, whereas a BVM is mostly metal and has a little bit more durability to stand up to a shipping uh, whole shipping you know experience. These ones are a little bit more fragile, and you need to know that when you're either shipping it or just plain moving it around. But we'll go through, we'll change the capacitors, and we'll change those parts, and we'll run a full component and uh, RGB tests on it. And I will also install and show you some of those different video cards because I've got nearly um, all of them for this monitor, even some SDI uh, cards. So it's, uh, it's really interesting when you start using some of those other inputs to get things like 720p and 1080i you can use different formats to get that into your monitor besides just component. Uh, maybe just a couple more things to note on this monitor specifically. Uh, again, it came from the uh, video editor in town, and I was able to get it, uh, again, a, a, a good while ago, and I've just not had a little real lot of time to work on it, so I'm excited to be able to finally bring this to you. I'm going to show you uh, just a little bit more gameplay footage here. And then I'm going to say, hey, thanks again, everybody, for watching today's Retro Tech. Um, if you have any questions about this monitor, you want to know anything specifically to adjust on your L5, uh, leave it in a comment below and make sure you're subscribed up to the channel because these videos are going to be coming quickly. My plan is to get started on this full repair tomorrow. I've already got the parts here and we'll get it torn apart and uh, get it future proofed because again, I mean, the, the sharpness of this thing is pretty much as good as you could get from a starting point on a monitor. And uh, the 2005 is one of the best and most popular PVMs because of its multi-format features, its size, its picture quality, and all around greatness when it comes to analog video. But thanks again, everybody. I appreciate your time today. I'll see you next time with some more retro content.